All right, let's talk a little bit about cold blues. Cold blues are basically acidic uh, solutions that do a controlled corrosion of the surface of the metal. Uh, it has to be a steel or an iron for a cold blue to work. They won't work on aluminum or some castings. But generally for gun metal, a cold blue will work just fine. Um, different manufacturers use different alloys to make their guns. And that's why we have such a variety of cold blues, because one cold blue won't work on all, all metal alloys the same way. Even on uh, the same firearm, for instance, uh, the barrel metal may differ substantially from the receiver metal, or even the screws or trigger that are in the gun. And the cold blue that you selected may give you slightly different results on each piece. Also what affects cold bluing results are the surface preparation. For instance, if you have a highly polished gun, say like a highly polished Remington here, or if you have the expressed version right next to it with the sandblasted finish, your cold bluing results are going to look much different on those two guns. One will give you a high bright polish, the other one's going to stay dull no matter what you do. Um, a lot of times if the damage to the finish has been to the point where you're at bare metal, you may have to re-texture uh, that surface to match the surrounding area. So your cold blue will do a better job. If it's a highly polished area and it's been pitted or corroded, you may have to polish it out to match the, reflective, the reflectivity or the surface finish of the surrounding metal. Some of these uh, chemicals will affect the original finish. So you have to be careful and experiment on a small surface that doesn't show to make sure the cold blue you've chosen will not eat up the existing blue that was left on there from the factory. Another thing that can affect your results is how well the gun is prepped as far as cleaning. Um, normally I use a no residue cleaner like our TCE because it leaves nothing behind but bare metal. It gives your cold blue every opportunity to work at its very best. Uh, other solvents, if you try to use something like kerosene, gasoline, lighter fluid, you're not going to get good results because they will inhibit the action of your cold blue. So because of the variables in the formulation of the, the various cold blues and of the metals that make up the guns, it's really impossible to say which cold blue would be the best for your application. That is a question we get very often at Brownells, and the answer is always the same. I don't know until I try it. But with enough uh, preparation and a little bit of knowledge, all of our cold blues will give you a good result if you take your time and follow some basic rules. First rule is make sure the surface you want a cold blue is very clean. Normally, I use a zero residue cleaner like TCE. This does not leave anything behind to inhibit the action of your, of your cold blue. Another way to uh, facilitate turning color on a cold blue is to warm the metal parts that you're about to blue. I try not on small uh, scratches or nicks not to do any sanding or filing unless absolutely necessary. Sometimes the less you do the better, especially in wear areas. Um, this smooth area right here for example, that's very smooth just like the rest of the receiver. You can blue that just as it is. You want to use the, the blue sparingly as you can. A lot of times when you put too much of it on, you'll get streaks. Another thing you can do is vary the material used to apply it. You can use a paper towel, a shop towel. Sometimes Q-tips work, uh, Q-tip works well, or even fine steel wool. It'll vary from gun to gun and from surface to surface as to how well these help you along. Once you've done your bluing, you want to neutralize the area. Anything you've touched with cold blue has got an acidic solution on it, and you want to get rid of that so it doesn't keep rusting the metal long after you put it away. Uh, you can do this a couple ways. You can use degreaser, a solvent like our TCE, or warm water and a rag can also wipe down and remove all the chemicals. Now, we have some general guidelines we can use for these cold blues. For bluing an entire firearm, we recommend the Oxfo blue, either in the cream or the liquid form. 
you're going to do just touch-up work, small scratches, scrapes, wear marks, either the 4440 or the Dicropan T4 is excellent for that type of use. In some cases, the work you need to do is very, very simple and straightforward. We have a little wear around the loading port of this 1100. So I'm going to take a Q-tip, a swab, saturate it with 4440, and I'm just going to go over the area where it's starting to lose its finish or has lost its finish and blacken it up again. This is something you can do as often as needed and on a hard hunted gun or a often holstered gun this is very easy to do. It only takes a few minutes and we've turned it black. After that I'll take a little solvent on a rag wipe it down to remove all the cold blue residue because it will continue to act on the steel if you do not remove it and eventually end up in a rust. And then we take any kind of good gun oil in this case Hoppy's gun oil and oil the area down. And at least this part of the gun is ready to go again. 